It ain't the structure that gets criticized. It's the fact that your head coach had no Nobody. idea. And when you have an embattled quarterback, right or wrong, about with Dak Prescott, and you make a move to bring in a much, you know, ballyhooed, heralded quarterback who's never played, obviously, into the mix, you are asking for, you know, the page sixes of the world to write about it, right? So no one's disputing the fact that Jerry Jones pulled off what might be in the future one of the great moves of all time. Maybe it's not a great move, but he's the owner. Every owner in football can do the same thing Jerry Jones did. Nobody was criticizing the fact that Jerry did it. It's that he did it, and none of his personnel guys knew that he was going to do it. Yeah, and this is a roster spot. Like, you don't trade for a quarterback and bring him in. Not, none of us believes that he's going to take this position over and be their, their quarter, starting quarterback. But it's a roster spot that you're taking away from somebody else in training camp that's been here this entire time, been busting their tail, yep. and your head coach can't even make that decision. Right. On top of that, he also said in the same interview, like, I've been following Trey Lance. I knew who he was. I like, no, you didn't. Nobody knows who Trey Lance is. Right. right? Like, he was, he was a dark They horse. even went down further than that and said, hey, Mike, didn't you have a high grade for him coming out of the draft? Like, to double down yeah. on the fact that we see what San Francisco couldn't figure out, right? And I told you, I know you disagree. This is a goose under his ass. That's what part of what this is. How Trey is Lance great? being there because people are talking about the potential that the Cowboys it are going to divorce of themselves from Dak Prescott in the near future. So do you think Dak is, is, is rattled by this? Because I don't. Not, that's it's, not the word I would use. Not rattled. Bothered. Aware. Exactly. That, He's aware. That's all, that's all you want. How? There's not enough footage for me to be bothered. There's not enough. Yeah, there's not even. He doesn't have the acumen that that Dak has. Like it's he's a nobody in Dak's so world. It, like, it, and we all we all watched the Green Bay Packers draft Jordan Love, and we right. didn't know what Jordan Love was. The Packers were hoping, hopefully, he turns out to be something. But you know who was bothered most? Who? Uh, Rogers. First ballot Hall of Fame yeah, but quarterback. Yeah, and there are two different people from a character standpoint. I, I don't two care. Two different people. No, no, no. no it's wait. Aaron's older. It's the point. Dak got the bag, and he, there was security there. So I, there was no reason to be worried about that. Aaron has the bag. He's been getting the bag every year. Yeah, like, but once you get the new bag, it's like, all right, I'm here. I'm cemented. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, combined that Dak Prescott and Aaron Rodgers have made half a billion dollars. Right, a lot of money. So it's not even about the money; it's what he's saying. You have pride. Yes, like I'm the man here, right? And he still is the man. But they brought in a guy it's, that makes people now question. That's it, right is there. there. A plan They're going forward with a guy who what did what in his career? Okay, so then why bring him in? It's, why bring him in? I'm with you. My point is, I'm from the standpoint of Dak. I'm not looking behind me because he's in the building. He's bothered by. He's not rattled by. He's, by he's, he's, he's aware he's no. there, but all we need <coughs> is them to start two cares. and three. They start two and three. Dak throws a bunch of picks, and next thing you know, there's gonna be people in the building. You think if Dak Trey, Trey Lance take name. happy parade, they, he's, they, they're gonna be calling for Trey Lance? No, I don't think people for us. They, I don't think they'll be, but there'll be fans. There'll be people in media. There'll be a noise saying you've got Cooper Rush. You've it got goes Trey like this. Lance, Let's not? say three. Dak Prescott throws three interceptions Sunday night against the Giants. Sure. All right, there's gonna be a, a reporter doing his job. Her job goes up to Dak Prescott. You still think you're the guy to lead this team? He should say, yeah. Right. You, you, do you think you're a problem? The question you know, will be asked. All that, that type of stuff. And then it's going to be Jerry Jones. And he thought of bringing Cooper Russian. Forget about Trey Lance for a minute. And he thought about being Cooper Russian. And then you're going to hear stories, boy, Trey Lance is looking good in practice. No. Because you already saw it with Cooper They weren't even saying that when he was a San Fran. It's he different. He just left training camp. San Fran said, this he guy like, sucks because we have not heard <laughs> One of my favorite things about this interview that Jerry Jones did is later in the interview, he's like, I did all the evaluation. We looked at what Trey Lance did the last two years in San Francisco. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> what? what did he what? do the last two years? That's yeah. my point. What did he do totally. the last few years? And he cited that as why he made this move. I tell you, I thought it I'll tell you the best thing Trey Lance has done is he made himself look like Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best he ever did. Number 15, red yeah. jersey, hair. the hair coming yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. I thought every time I see him, I'm like, that's a young Patrick Mahomes. That's brutal. See, we got some Trey Young situation. Moving on to second down. We'll get back to <laughs> we'll get back to hairlines later. Second down, we have Mike Tomlin. Everybody loves Mike Tomlin, coach of the Steelers. They face the 49ers. Will Nick Bosa play? Will he not play? Well, guess what? You'll never believe this. Mike Tomlin has a plan. 
Look, look, it's what we talked about uh, yesterday or the day before. If you're a defensive lineman, you can show up the day before and be productive on the field. It's easy. See ball, get ball. Right? That's it. That's, I mean, it's hard. To, it's easy to walk into the stadium yeah. and be Batman. But I think part of the preparation is because the Steelers are starting a rookie left tackle. And they know how bad of a man Nick Bosa is. And you don't want that guy's first day at the job to go against that man. And then you want to quit, right? right. So they have to prepare. Pressure. They have to scheme it up. If that man isn't in, you know, his feet are in cleats. You got to prepare and one. You got to prepare your left tackle for that too. So this yeah. is this is why Mike Tomlin has had the success he's had because he prepares. He he ensures that these my, the guys that I'm going out on the field with will be prepared with whatever is thrown at him. Like Nick Bosa, it, whether he plays or not, the fact of the matter is is if an offensive lineman has Nick Bosa across from him, he's in trouble. If he doesn't because of the depth at uh, the defensive right. line of the 49ers, they're still in trouble. I mean, how so, do you prepare for him not being there anyway? I understand if he's there, have a running back in to chip, have a tight end on that side of the field. If he's not playing, isn't that like Christmas in September? Well, no, you tell your young rookie left tackle, you can breathe now. It's going to be a tough day. The boogeyman is not yeah. here. Let's have a day, young fella. Yeah, I heard yeah. he killed a man with a pencil. <laughs> right, right, exactly. You tell you can breathe today. Yeah. That was John Wick. Uh, yeah. 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 I knew there was somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Denzel Washington equalizer reference and a John Wick reference in the I'm same. I'm doing my Steelers best. Topic. <laughs> Great job by you. Evil Knievel jumped over the Grand Canyon. Moving on. Tyreek. Wide receiver for the Dolphins had this to say about the improvement day after day of his quarterback to a tongue of ice. Got thick legs, huh? Yeah, I don't buy the fact that Tua is talking smack. Uh, you got enough smack talkers on that team where I don't see Tua fit in on that. Uh, he's a thick-legged guy, Tua is, of course. Yeah, he's, uh, he's learned how to fall in jiu-jitsu classes, apparently, mm-hmm. this offseason. Look. He was having a great year. I'm not going to lie about it. You know, prior to all the concussions, of course, he underthrows every deep ball that he throws, but he's got guys who can stop on a dime, come back and get it, and then obviously go run another 40 yards. Uh, I don't buy the fact that he's leveling up each and every day. If two is healthy, he's been a good quarterback. Look, I buy it. I'm going to tell you why I buy it, because last year when Tyreek Hill was making all these Mm -hmm. statements about Tua throws a better deep ball than Patrick Mahomes, and he looks at he's the most crazy. accurate. We thought it was crazy. Yeah, we did. Crazy. Yeah. Until the season started, and we were like, oh, my goodness, he's backing it up. He looked great in every game that he played when he was the starting quarterback. It was when he got injured when things started to get derailed. So, for me to not believe what, what Tyreek Hill is saying, I, I, I would know, be a You know what's funny fool. about the Dolphins also, and I was thinking about this, talking to my kids about this because, you know, they're getting ready to play fantasy football and all that stuff. You hear a lot of smack coming out of Miami. A lot of it's from their fans. They're a very proud fan base. DolphinsTalk.com and all those guys, they love Miami, and they've been a terrible franchise for the better part of a quarter century. You know the one guy we've not heard a lot from or about who is instrumental instrumental to their success is Jalen Waddle. It's always Tyreek. And I get it. Tyreek loves the cameras and the microphones and is great with the media. But Waddle's as good as anybody in football. Yep. No, I think Waddle's is legit. But I think one guy to step it up, Darren Bevel, the quarterback coach for Tua, who coached Brett Favre, Russell Wilson, and Matthew Stafford, has done wonders for this young man. Told him to step out of his comfort zone, be a factor in the locker room. Don't take everything so uh, intensely. You, you're going to be the face of this franchise, yeah. and he is. And Tua's gotten better every year since he's been in the league. What Tua has also done, and I'm really proud of him, is he's, he's really kind of had some moxie to him. I like that he clapped back at yeah. Ryan Clark. I like yeah. the fact that he's saying, watch me work. I like the fact that he's saying that I've been through the mud. You got to say, Tua crawled into the NFL, coming off the injuries in Alabama. Yep. Yep. He had a competition against uh, Brian Fitzpatrick. And you know what he can say now? Look at me now. I'm still standing. I will say this. So I love that about him. Your point, I think, is very well taken. There's a lot of quarterbacks who don't have 100% confidence yeah. who would have let any comment just go by because you don't get into it. If you're, if you're uber confident in what you're capable of doing as an NFL quarterback, you do clap back. You have So to. I think that's a major change for him because he's been a quiet, very respectful kid who doesn't say very a lot. He's not, sweet, he's not a headline guy yeah. mm-hmm. when it comes to quotes. And the fact that he came out and said regarding, you know, uh, Ryan Clark, well, you know, uh, I can get scrappy if you want to get scrappy. You can do that. Like, I, if I'm a guy in the Dolphins uh, locker room, 
Oh, I want that. That fires yeah. me up yeah. like, We know yeah. they're not fighting, obviously, but the fact that my quarterback came out and said, yo, I'm tonguing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's go down, bro. What up, Oof? Right. Oof? <laughs> what up, Oof? <laughs> we get going right now. Like, let's go. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out, too.